Hello all and welcome back to my channel. It's Miss Christensen here. I'm so glad you guys are here to join me. Today I'll be doing an outline lecture on poetry. I have seven different books that I'm going to be reading a little bit from to show you what different poetry books look like. I will also be doing a little background on informational books. I'm going to be comparing and contrasting that to poetry. I don't want to waste any time so let's get right into the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy. Poetry is a small but powerful thing. Poems have the power to reach inside of you, ignite something in you, and change you in ways that you have never imagined. Poetry is many things that children love. Poetry is learning and experimenting together. It's music and laughter. Poetry is unaffined performances, poetry stories, and more interesting. It is impactful learning. It is seen as well as heard. In poetry, shared experiences and appreciation. These are all things that children love to see while and hear while they're learning and reading books. In our book, Cutipur and Wilson summarized children's preferences of poetry. They said that narrative poetry and lyrics were popular with readers of all ages, while haiku and free verses were disliked the most. Students preferred books that contained rhyme, rhythm, and sound. I am now going to read a book called There Was a Man who loved a rat. This book was written by Greta Rovetch and illustrated by Lisa Rovetch. I'm gonna read a little bit out of it starting at the beginning. There was a man in Albany who loved a little lima bean. He kept it in a velvet bag and only took it out to brag. This book um, showed the rhyming and that's um, a good poetry book and like I just said um, in my statement that I said right before this before I started reading the book that students prefer poems containing rhyme rhythm and sound so that's why I connected this book with the sentence that I just read so I'm going to read another book that falls under the rhyme category this book is called noisy poems it is collected by Jill Bennett and illustrated by Nick Schrapp this book is really unique because all of the different pages have a different poem on them with a different topic. So this book really stood out to me when I was trying to find um, books to read to you guys. But the book, the poem that I picked out to read to you guys is actually called Rhyme, believe it or not, and that's the topic I'm reading on. Um, so I'm going to read this to you guys real quick. It's just, this is all the poem is and just on this page. So it's called the Rhyme. I like to see a thunderstorm, a thunderstorm, a blunderstorm, a blunderstorm. I like to see it black and slow come stumbling down the hills. I like to hear a thunderstorm, a plunderstorm, a wonderstorm roar loudly at our little house and shake the window sills by Elizabeth Coatsworth. So that's all this poem is. And I think that's super cool. And it's called, the poem is titled rhyme obviously you could tell that this poem has super cool rhyming in it and the illustrations are super cool to me too because it that's what it is is a poem about a thunderstorm shaking the house so i find this book super cool i would really suggest one of you you guys to check this out and read the rest of the poems in it i did read through them and they are all super unique and have great oops <laughs> great um, illustrations in them and great meaning to the poems. So that's that one on rhyme. Kitapur and Wilson also suggested that children most enjoy poetry with humor, familiar experiences, and animals in it. So I'm going to now read a book called School People that has a lot of familiar experiences in it um, related to children. It is written by Lee Bennett Hawkins and illustrated by Alan Shai. So this book has just a bunch of different poems in it um, related to school. So I will be reading um, the poem Music Teacher as I think it falls under humor a little bit and experiences, familiar experiences. Um, all of these obviously fall under familiar experiences, but I think it's kind of funny too. So here we go. She walks in music like morning rain. Drip, drop, pitter, patter, boot, stomp, splash. And all that's best of noise and silence. Neat and 
meet in her flash flood smile. She doesn't say hush or stop or no. She says, yes, louder, sing my angels, sing. And so our hearts overflow, symphonies river from our lips. We walk in music like morning rain, drip, drop, pitter, patter, boom, stomp, splash. So that's the poem that they have written over music teacher. So obviously this is the music teacher and all of those kids are going to music class. Um, going in there in rain. As you can tell, she has rain boots on and an umbrella because they're in the rain. So I thought that was a good poem to read to you guys. I picked out a um, chapter book to read to you guys on poetry. It's called Pizza, Pigs, and Poetry by Jack Kuluski. Um, this poem just falls under the humor category. It's called Rats for Lunch. Rats for lunch, rats for lunch. Yummy, delicious, munch, munch, munch. One by one or by the bunch. Rat, oh rat, oh rat for lunch. Scrambled slug in salty slime is our choice for breakfast time. But for lunch we say to you, nothing by a rat will do. Rat for lunch, rat for lunch. Yum, delicious, munch, munch, munch. One by one or by the brunch. Rat, oh rat, oh rat for lunch. For a snack we eat. Afternoon, we chew bites of baked bamboo. Curried squirrels, buttered bat, but for lunch, we must be rat. Rat for lunch, rat for lunch, yum delicious, munch, munch, munch. One by one, or by the bunch, rat, oh rat, oh rat for lunch. In the evening, we may dine, oh filet of pop, pecurine, buzzard, gizzard, lizard, chops, but for lunch, a rat is tops. Rat for lunch, rat for lunch, yum, delicious, munch, munch, munch. One by one or by the bunch, rat, oh rat, rat, oh rat for lunch. Rat we love, we steamed or oh stewed, blackened, broiled, or barbecued, pickled, poached, or fried in fat. There is nothing like a rat. Rat for lunch, rat for lunch, yum, munch, delicious, munch, munch. One by one or by the bunch, rat, oh rat, oh rat for lunch. So there is no illustrations, usually like in a chapter book, there is no illustrations, but I just thought that was like a unique, funny um, poem, rat for lunch. It's kind of odd, nobody eats rats for lunch, but um, there's also um, how to poetry tips in here on how to write poems, like you can see um, in the right corner of this book. So if you guys are like writing, looking for how to write po um, poems, this guy has this whole whole book of poems, but also he has lots of tips in here of how to write poems. So I'd suggest this book also to check out or to buy on um, if you're looking to write poems, because there's a lot of great tips in here. I looked through um, it, looking at the poems, like which one I wanted to read to you guys. And I also looked at a lot of his tips. So great book, but also um, good poems in here for tips and poems and then lots of funny ones. Elementary students also like poems that are contemporary poems. This means poems that are present day. So I will now read a book called Good Rhymes, Good Times. It is written by Lee Bennett Hopkins and illustrated by Fran Levick. The book or the poem I will be reading is called This Too. This Too. I jiggled it, gaggled it, jerked it. I pushed and pulled and poked it, but as soon as I stopped and left it alone, this tooth came out on its very own. The poem's right here. So that's all of the poem. Each poem in this book, once again, is just um, very short, like one page, as you can tell. Most of the poems are, except um, on the first book that we read, that was um, the whole entire book was the poem. And then I think I have one, a couple more books that are like that. So this is a good book, once again, to check out because all of the pages are um, different um, poems. So I would recommend checking this out and then reading them yourself. And they're easy read poems. I did that on purpose so that you guys would be able to read them and check them out and read them yourself.
I like this book because um, as elementary students, you guys are probably losing teeth right now. And so that was a good poem to read. So don't pull out your teeth, just leave it alone and fall on your own. <laughs> so I think that's a good book for you guys to read. It's called Good Rhymes, Good Time. Another contemporary book I have on poems is called Vivid Poems and Notes About Colors. This is by Julia Pashkis. I'm going to read the poem called Indigo. Diving into long lakes head first, and I go, plummeting through light blue deep down low into indigo. So this poem is called Indigo. As you can see, the water is indigo. This book is called um, Vivid Poems and Notes About Colors um, because every page is on a different color. And also there's notes about the colors on every single page that you could read. So I would also suggest getting this book because this is how you can learn your colors and um, notes about them, like fun facts. Because some of them have fun facts on them. As I was reading, there was like a fun fact on the color pink and stuff, the um, sun. It was like something about or the color yellow about the sun and stuff. And blue, it said like was the saddest color, but it was people's favorite color and stuff like that. So I would definitely recommend this book. It, you can learn fun facts about it, but you could also learn your colors. So super informational too, um, great book. So for my last book that is a contemporary poem is called Alpha Thought. It is written by Lee Bennett Hopkins and illustrated by Mar Marla Baguette. I'm just going to read this one from the beginning. A. Oh, A. Alphabet. A, mir a miraculous set of 26 letters when rearranged makes every English word appear. B. Books. Pages and pages of bound forevers. C. Custodian. Keeper of clean. I'm going to stop right there. One, because I want you guys to check this out and read it because it's very informational. Um, there's a lot of great information here to learn about different things that relate to letters in our alphabet. Um, probably why it's called Alpha Thoughts because you can learn a lot of things with it. Also, this is a great book to learn your alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G goes on and on telling you how to learn your alphabet. And I just thought it was a great book. Um, also, a poem book. Um, also, those are, could you tell that those were little poems um, related to the letters? Never apart, even far away. That's a little poem. So, I really like this book. As soon as I um, thought or saw it, I thought I had to get this and read to you guys. So alphabet poems see right there so i would really 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 encourage you guys to get this book there's so many great things about this book that i just really love one way that um poetry and informational books do connect is that they have a big variety of things that can be they can be written about such as music art uh history technology whatever they want to be written about they both can be written about and this is one way that they do connect like I mentioned earlier, the Vivid Poems and Notes About Colors and the Alpha Thought books, these are both great informational books as they great, give great information during their poems. So these both books fall under the informational genre and the poems genre. This is one way that these books both fall under both genres and these genres are related. Informational books is something found in a universe that is nonfiction. They tell a true story and is a distinct beginning, middle, and end. Um, poetry is something that can be made up. Informational books include a real characters, a setting, and a narrative with a rising arc, rising tension, and a climax, which a poetry does not. Poetry is just a short little story that um, you saw in a lot of our books, which can be a lot of fake things like um, the people eating rat that's not true so usually um informational books well all the time informational books is true information so um this is one way a couple ways that um they are different 